Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, reminding you that the ClassicsToday.com store is open for business. And I'm putting a link below this review so that you can go there. I mean, spring is upon us. The weather is turning nice, except for my good friends in Australia, in which case the weather is turning cold. You all need short sleeve t-shirts. I'm sure you do. Except, of course, if you're in Australia, then you need sweatshirts. And we have both. Now, I haven't been talking about our merchandise and swag shop. We've got water bottles and coffee cups and all kinds of cool stuff basically because I didn't want to do a hard sell. You know, I mean, I, I'm trying not to be hard sellish about it, but eh, what the heck, buy something. You know you want it. You know you need it. It's cool. You'll enjoy it. Your friends will talk about it, and then they might buy something too. So that's the pitch. I appreciate your patronage. Thank you so much. Now, let's talk about this thing. The Constantine Silvestri box, which apparently is still around. I don't know if it's around just as a download or as a, a complete thing here, but this is Warner. So at one point it was a Warner, which is a good thing. The reason I want to talk about this, first of all, is because he was one of the great unsung conductors of the 20th century, an absolute podium genius. And I mean that very seriously. An amazing, fabulously expressive, communicative, intelligent musician who never really got the, the attention that he deserved, but he did enough. He did enough. And that's the point. We have 15 CDs here, which consists of all of his orchestral recordings except concerto accompaniments. And those are usually in the boxes where the concertos are with the soloist or whatever. So it's not like this stuff is hard to find. He was amazing. And I talked about this box before. And uh, one of the problems, however, was, you know, I did it sort of at the beginning when I was launching the channel. And at that point, I was really eager to pile as much stuff in as possible to get a really good representative sample of all the important things. So I did a talk called Five Great Conductor Boxes, and this was one of them. But now that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing, I'm getting close actually to about 1,350 videos, and I think I can relax just a little bit, and we can spend a little more time with some of these really fabulous and important musical icons, the icon series. Well, it, yes, there it is, Icon. See, there you go. So I was not making it up because Silvestri is just amazing. Well, you all know that. I mean, we've been talking about him now for a couple of years, and the name pops up regularly. He did do some peculiar things, but by and large, he was amazing. He spent most of his time in Bournemouth, where he you know, inherited a very second-class orchestra that he often got to play in first-class fashion. But more than that, his, his interpretations, wherever he did them, I mean, he did work with the Paris Conservatory Orchestra, with the Vienna Philharmonic, they are, they are like Chandor Weig's interpretations in the sense that, or Ferenc Fritschoy, that Central European, he was Romanian, that Central Euro European, I don't know what to say, soulfulness, this humanity, this expressive naturalness, everything that he did had that quality. Really remarkable, remarkable man. So let's talk about what's in the box, the 15 CDs, one at a time, and just and celebrate this guy's reputation and the fact that we have this many recordings to enjoy. I mean, I would do 10 best recordings, but I can't because there's not enough stuff to choose from. And frankly, all of them are his best recordings. Well, most of them are. I mean, they really are amazing. And I this set, this box, by the way, was reviewed on classicstoday.com, where you can go and hear a whole pile of musical examples, about four of them, I think. And, and I'm going to put a link to that review down here, too. So if you are a Classics Today insider subscriber, go and listen to some of this stuff. And if you're not, you should know. We've done a lot of box sets on classicstoday.com, like hundreds of them with samples. And if you're an insider subscriber, you have access to all of that stuff, and it's pretty good. So I've done a double pitch. Excuse me, I have an itch there. My word. Let's talk. First, Klinka, Ruslan and Ludmila, CD1, Baradin, Prince Igor Overture, and the Paul Oftsian Dances with the Paris Conservatory Orchestra. Yeah. Love them. Just love them. 
And then we get in the steppes of Central Asia and a bunch of Tchaikovsky things, the Polonaise from Eugene Onegin, the Capriccio Italien, and the 1812 Overture, all with Bournemouth with like a real band and, 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 uh, and a principal band person and all that stuff. Oh, it's lots of fun. Tchaikovsky, Symphonies 4, 5, and 6. Those are the next couple of discs. Now, the fourth is weird. And what's weird about it, the performance itself is quite splendid, but the opening fanfare... He, he does something with the rhythm instead of he does I, I can't even begin to describe what he does. It's a very strange handling of that rhythm. And that's what he does. The other ones, five and six, are terrific and nothing particularly bizarre happens. Then we have Rimsky Korsakov, the May Night Overture. Ah, disc four. Tchaikovsky's Manfred Symphony. And this is with the Paris... Cons oh, no, this is with the Orchestre National de la Radio Diffusion Française. It's 1957 in mono. Very good-sounding mono. Wow, what a great Manfred. If this had been in stereo, if he'd done it later with another orchestra, you know, it just... That would have been the Manfred. It would have been the one. It's It already is the one, only in mono. It's phenomenal. I mean, it's so typical of him that the piece that virtually everybody screws up in one way or another, he celebrates. It's magnificent. Then we've got the Rimsky-Korsakov Capriccio Espanol with the Vienna Philharmonic, and on disc five, A Night on Bald Mountain and Scheherazade with, with Bournemouth, and it's a really good Scheherazade, too. Really good Night on Bald Mountain, too. Exciting. Really exciting. He gets through it in 10 minutes and 10 seconds. That is a no BS Night on Bald Mountain. I kid you not. And then Stravinsky's Le Chante Rossignol with the Philharmonia from 1960. So that's in stereo, and it's wonderfully played, and it's just marvelous. I mean, it's vintage Philharmonia. So Stravinsky again, the Symphony in Three Movements from the same sessions, 1960. The Bartok Divertimento and Hindemith's Mathis der Mahler. Oh, these are all with the Philharmonia, and they are all splendid. <laughs> I mean, you know, you just go from one thing to another with this guy, and you just say, wow, that's so good. Oh, that's so good. Oh, my goodness, it's just terrific. And it is. It really is. Disc 7, Prokofiev, The Love for Three Oranges, Sweet, Cacciatore, and the Guyana, Sweet Number 1. It ends, you know, the one ends with the saber dance. And then Shostakovich 5, that's with the Vienna Philharmonic. It's a very interesting Shostakovich 5, by the way. The tempi are a little unusual, and the proportions are a little bit different, but boy, does it sing. Oh, yeah, it sings. Uh, disc 8, Dvorak, New World Symphony, with the Orchestre National de la Radio Diffusion Française. He always did a great New World, and there are two of them here, so I'm warning you in advance. And Dvorak, 8 and 7. One is with the London Phil, the other is with the Vienna Phil, and they are... What can I say? They're wonderful performances that no one pays attention to. No one remembers them. I don't even talk about them. But boy, are they good. They're just so heartfelt and so lyrically expressive. Good goodness. Okay, Carnival Overture, that's there too. And with the London Phil and a couple of Slavonic dances and a couple of Brahms Hungarian dances. These are very well filled CDs, by the way, which is like a good thing. Well, it's over an hour each. Let's say, put it that way. Berlioz, Symphony Fantastique. Now, nobody thinks of Silvestri when you do the Symphony Fantastique. They should. That's again with the Paris Conservatory Orchestra. It's the best Fantastique with the Paris Conservatory Orchestra by a mile. It really is. And then you get Fire, the Ritual Fire Dance and the Interlude and Dance from La Vida Breve. Oh, I love that. Don't we all? Oh, it's so wonderful. So that's the Paris Conservatory Orchestra doing that stuff. And, oh, it's just juicy. Then we've got the Franck D minor, because in those days everyone had to do the Franck D minor with the Philharmonia. And again, it's marvelous. What's really beautiful about this Franck D minor is that the central movement has more of the feeling of a slow movement than a lot of performances, but it contrasts very strongly with the finale, which is quite swift and exciting. So it's a beautifully proportioned and wonderfully shaped supple and sensual recording of the frock. It's just yummy. 
Then we've got uh, Sansol, the Danse Macabre, What's Not to Love, and Duca, Saucer's Apprentice, which he conducts splendidly. You'd never know it's that difficult. And this is with Bournemouth. And boy, does he get them to play. He really gets them to play. And the Ravel Pavan for a Dead Princess. And then the Vienna Philharmonic doing Ravel's Rhapsody Espanol quite well, too. And again, you have to keep in mind, the Vienna Philharmonic playing Ravel in the 50s was like weird. It was not their style. And you can kind of tell it's not their style, but he's making them do it. And they're doing it. And it's really kind of cool to listen to them do it because even much later in the 80s, and, you know, Jimmy Levine did a Daphnis and Chloe with a Vienna Philharmonic for Deutsche Grammophon that was just horrible. It was so unidiomatic. So you give Sylvester credit for getting them to really play. Then we've got Debussy, The Afternoon of a Fawn, The Nocturnes in La Mer. This is all with the Paris Conservatory and Ravel's Bolero. And it is fabulous. Oh, it's so fabulous. Oh, my goodness. You just want to sing about you know, how great can it be? Don't ever mind me. I just get lost to the wonderfulness of it all. And then we've got some, let's see, CD 13 is Der Freischutz Overture with a Philharmonia and a Midsummer Night's Dream Overture with a Philharmonia and Liszt's Les Preludes and Tasso with the Philharmonia. And the Hungarian Rhapsody Number no. 4 with the Vienna Philharmonic and the Hansel and Gretel Prelude by Humperdinck with the Philharmonia. It's also wonderful. It's all great. Who am I kidding? CD 14, Inescu, Romanian Rhapsody Number no. 1 with the Vienna Phil. A beautiful performance, but the best one is the mono one with the Czech Phil on Superfund, which is one of the greatest performances of anything you've ever heard. I mean, it's, it's astounding every single solo and oh my god it's amazing it's amazing if you can find that i talked about it if you can find it you know it's a no-brainer even if it is coupled with like the lalo cello concerto it's okay uh sibelius finlandia overture to in the south by elgar possibly the best ever performance of that the vaughn williams talus fantasia that is my reference version of the Talus Fantasia, the most passionate and and soulful and and shattering performance of that you've ever heard, probably. And the Wasps Overture, which is delicious. And then we get another New World Symphony. Um, is it the older one or the newer one? I think it's the older one, actually. Um, it was recorded before the other one. It may be mono and the other stereo. I don't. Yeah, it's mono. Um, so the other one's in stereo, but it's very much the same interpretation. Uh, and then the other Sanson Dals Macabre and the other Sorcerer's Apprentice. See, he remade those in stereo. Uh, those are with the Paris Conservatory Orchestra, and that is the Sylvester Legacy. Not a ton, not a ton, no Brahms, no Beethoven particularly, but lots of everything else. And it's a very fair and varied assortment, and it's so good. I mean, it has no weak links anywhere, really, except for that weird opening to the Tchaikovsky Fourth. And it just, of course, makes you wish that there had been more because it was so great. I mean, there are live things. There's other stuff floating around. Um, and there's a whole bunch of stuff on Electrochord, which was the Romanian national label and, like, dismal sound. But never mind. We are lucky to have this. And if you can still find it or if you can download it, just get it and start listening. It is just the most amazing, amazing conducting that you've heard in like a long time. And you will be shocked that this guy had such a, a limited career in the day. It really is sort of astonishing. But thank God we have what we have. So keep on listening, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care.